Wildlands, welcome. It's game two of this three-game series between the Miami Redhawks and the Central Michigan Chippewas. Miami took game one, four to two, and it's almost time for first pitch out here in Oxford. Bree Pratt taking the circle once again for the Redhawks. We'll take you through the Chippewa starting lineups after Abby Tomley takes the plate. Tomley started off game one with a base knock, came around and scored, but was held off the paths after that. Bree Pratt gave up two runs in the top half of the first inning that hung zeros for the rest of the game. Carly Spades underneath it for the first out. Let's go ahead and take you through the Central Michigan Chippewa starting lineup. You saw Tomley leading off. Valamont will be batting second. Alexander batting third. Holo will be cleaning up. She's the designated hitter. Coberly will be batting in the five hole. She's playing second base. Brocamonte batting six. Cronin seventh. Mills eight. And Springer will be anchoring the lineup. Bree Pat, Pratt back out there in the circle through a complete game. And game one has Valamont fouls one back. She had a double back in the first inning of game one. Pratt stats, she's now 23 and 10 on the season. 24 complete games, a 3.10 ERA. She has struck out 168 batters this year. She has walked 56. Missing on the inside. She is two outs away from throwing 200 innings this year. Was honored before game one for her career here. And Miami, Carly Spade playing the hot corner across the diamond. What a play from the All-American. One hopper, backhands it, flips it across the diamond, a five to three put out. So this game starting out just like game one in the fact that Carly Spade already an assist and a put out to begin the ball game. She was featured quite prevalently in the field back in game one. We ground ball out to Chloe Parks, flips it over to Holly Blaska. A one, two, three, top half of the first inning. We got our bearings underneath us. We head to the bottom half of the first inning here in Oxford. Bottom of the first inning here in Oxford. I'm Ray Mouse, you're watching Love and Honor Live here on Chatterbox Sports. Casey McAllister producing today. Casey, let's go ahead and show the viewers the starting lineup for the Miami Redhawks. It looks similar to you. It's the exact way that they hit back in game one. Allie Cummins will be leading off. Holly Blaska in the two of Carly Spade batting third, Coyne cleanup. Jenna Golombeski batting fifth, Chloe Park sixth, Kate Kobayashi, Adriana Barlow, and Maddie Banks batting seventh, eighth, and ninth, respectively. New pitcher in the circle for Central Michigan here in game two. It's Caitlin Bean. Caitlin Bean this season has a 3.48 ERA, best on the team. She's thrown in 106 innings. She's got a 10 and 6 win loss. She has struck out 81 batters. She has allowed 31 walks.
Called strike to Allie Cummins. Cummins had an RBI in game one. And she plated the first run of the ball game for the Red Hawks. She awaits the 0-1 from Bean. Cummins batting 323. Did have an 0 for 2. Hasn't had a hit since game one of the Ball State series. Swing and strike as she couldn't catch up to the pitch from Bean. Bean, a red shirt senior from Oxford, Michigan. Bean rocks, deals, and Cummins fouls one back. Bean, and 19 starts this season, has completed 11 games. In fact, she has completed four of her last five starts. Missed it on the outside. Count is evened up at two and two. Miami did not get the lead till two outs in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Two out double from Kate Kobayashi. Let the Red Hawks get on top. Bree Pratt shut the door. Max standings now present with a three-way tie for first place. Miami, Central Michigan, Ohio, all with a 17 and seven record. Of course, that's gonna break after the conclusion of game two, either with Miami or Central Michigan at the top. As Allie time. Cummins will walk five, to begin Blasco. the bottom half of the first inning. Holly Blaska steps in. Blaska, a 315 hitter. Seven home runs, 37 RBIs. That was walk number 44 for Allie Cummins this season. Fouls one, out of play, down the left field line. The 0-1 to Blaska. Found back, two swinging strikes. I mentioned the Bobcats also at the top of that three-way tie. They're currently in a three-game series against Western Michigan. They won that first game seven to one. Western Michigan falls under 500 in the conference. The 0-2, called strike three, Bean. Freezes Holly Blaska for the first out here in the bottom half of the first. One on, one away for Carly Spade. Central Michigan after this three game series will host Akron to conclude the regular season. Akron 13 and 10 in the conference as of right now. Carly Spade to center field, Miami up two nothing. <laughs> Cummins and Spade, the duo both played it. Spade now leads the team in big flies. Number 17 this season for Spade. One pitch, and it's 2 nothing. And the catcher, number 15, Riley Coy. The thing about this Miami lineup, they have hit now 77 home runs this year. They have only allowed 26. And if the disparity in home runs wasn't enough, it is the manner in which they leave the yard that is just as striking. 
not a lot of wall scrapers from this Miami bunch, as that was a no doubter. So Coyne steps in, she had a no doubter in game one. Bases empty for Caitlin Bean. And Coyne offers at the 1-0, comes up empty. Gloomy here, start game two, 65 degrees. Both teams in the same uniforms they wore in game one. Miami in the all white with the red trim. As Coyne fouls one back. Love and honor across the front of Miami's jerseys. The Chippewas with the white bottoms, maroon and gold tops. Coyne stands tall, down one, two. Rides up and in, Coyne taken all away. Two, two, swung on a miss. Coin can't catch up. And there's two away. So we'll see Jenna Golombeski. She represented the go ahead run in the bottom half of that sixth inning. Used her speed to come around and score on the double from Kate Kobayashi. Can't catch up to that heat from Bean. Golombeski second on the team in average now. 327, her, Allie Cummins, and Riley Coyne. All flirting right around that 320 mark with Carly Spade up in the 350s. Missed up quite a bit here in the bottom half of the first. The 1-1. One, one. Out to center field, this has a chance, giving chase, and look it up. Golombeski makes it a three nothing ball game. Home run number 14 for Golombeski. RBI number 26. And Miami hangs a crooked number here in the bottom half of the first. The second baseman, number four, Corey Hart. Golombeski actually leads the team in slugging percentage. She has started in 12 less games than Carly Spade. This is only her 36th start of the season. That was at bat number 99, and she has left the yard 14 times. That's as opposed to the 150 at bats that Carly Spade has had this season. See if they bring a new arm to take the circle for Caitlin Bean. Doesn't look like that will be the case. Caitlin Bean coming into this ball game had only given up seven home runs all season long. Right there was number eight. And number nine. You'd have to go back all the way to April 1st, the last time that Caitlin Bean had given up more than two earned runs in an outing. As this has a chance to leave, Chloe Parks! Yes, she does! Chloe Parks with her first home run 
of the season. The sophomore from Indianapolis goes deep as Miami goes back to back. Next to the plate, the designated player, number 22, Pete Kobayashi. Chloe Parks hit four home runs last year, but it had escaped her to this point. And what about this? Three home runs, four plated here in the first inning. So many home runs there, having to restock the softball supply. And Miami's still at the plate, Kate Kobayashi coming up. So I just brought it up, but Caitlin Bean in 106 innings prior to this ball game given up just seven home runs. She's given up three here in the bottom half of the first inning. Kobayashi steps in, the hero from game one. Is hit by a pitch on the first pitch she sees. And now it's Adriana Barlow. Coming to the plate, the shortstop. Number six, Adriana Barlow. So they represented or honored three seniors today on senior day. Bree Pratt, Riley Coyne, and Adriana Barlow. See if Barlow can get on the hit parade. The graduate student from St. Louis, Missouri. She hit two home runs in the first weekend of the series. She's hit just one since. That was against Western Kentucky on March 12th. The shortstop for Miami. Oh, for her last eight. Sitting in a hitter's count. Fouls one straight back, 2-1. Kobayashi at first, Barlow at the plate. Swing and strike, it's 2-2. Linfield -two. playing straight up. Checks her wrist for the sign, the 2-2. And up and running is Kobayashi, this will hit off third base umpire Antonio Flores and that avoided it from going out into center field but Kobayashi's in scoring position the count is now full stolen base number eight on the season for Kobayashi counts now full to the starting shortstop for Miami ball four Back-to-back -back home runs, hit by a pitch and a walk. As Maddie Banks steps to the plate, the ninth hitter in the inning for Miami. Maddie Banks fouls home back. So on a team where they're, where they have hit 79 home runs this year. Hattie Banks has perhaps the most memorable. She put one midway over 
the hitting tunnels out in right field against Oklahoma just a couple weekends ago. In front of a capacity crowd here at the Miami University Softball Stadium, over 1,000 showed up to watch the number one team in the country. Miami held their own for three to four innings before those bats of the Sooners just got the better of the Red Hawks. So Bean misses up, it's 2-1. Banks had a triple in the first game as she's way out in front of that off-speed pitch. It's 2-2. 253 hitter. The graduate student from Bettendorf, Iowa. Bean gets the sign, the 2-2. Misses on the outside, so the count will run full. Brian Haraberta, the home plate umpire today. Antonio Flores down the third baseline, as we mentioned, Guy Morrow down the first. Off the end of the bat of Banks, Bean fields her position in the circle, flips it over to Cronin, and gets the third out. But Miami strike for four runs off three big flies. We head to the second, it's 4 nothing. Top of the second inning here in Oxford. Let's go ahead and take you through the Red Hawks defensive alignment. Out in the pasture from left to right, Matty Banks, Jenna Golombeski, and Allie Cummins. In the infield, third baseman is Carly Spade, Adriana Barlow at shorts, Chloe Parks at second, Holly Blask at first, and in the battery. The free prep is Riley Coyne. Hi, I'm Ray Mouse. You're watching Love and Honor Live here on Chatterbox Sports. Thank you for tuning in, and this is a leadoff single. Melissa Holo. Put a base runner on for the Chippewas. Skyler Coberly steps it. Coberly, a 244 hitter from Bay City, Michigan. Takes the first pitch for a called ball. She's a redshirt junior. 0 for 2 in game one. Pratt. Rocks deals. Misses in the dirt. A little more breathing room for Bree Pratt. I mentioned, until the seventh inning, Bree Pratt was never in the circle with the lead. Chopped over to Adriana Barlow, gonna be a tough play. She stops for the backhand, the throw into second, not in time. Switched her glove position at the last second. Turn it upside down, hit off her wrist. Tried to make the play out at second, but Guy Morrow says no, the throw was not in time. Holo beat it out. Two, 
And now Antonio Flores is going to call a meeting of the minds. Just to ask if anyone saw something differently. Morrow, here and out Antonio Flores. Heriberta and Floros hold up the call. That's yes, indeed. Holo was safe at seconds. So there's runners on first and second. And Emily Brocamonte steps in. Brocamonte is a 220 hitter. Hails all the way from California. One for two in game one, she lays down the bunt to perfection. Holly Blaska fields her position. Chloe Parks over at first. And it's a beautiful sack bunt. Blaska almost fell down fielding that ball. But it's a three to four put out. Holo moves to third, Coberly moves to second. So now it's Lucy Cronin. Crouched over in the right-handed batter's box. Takes the first pitch for a called strike. <laughs> 0 for 3 against Pratt in the first game of this doubleheader. Pratt could use a strikeout. He's yet to have one in the ball game. Corners in against Bracamonte. This bounces in front of the plate. Two and one. Decent little crown here for game two. Not as pretty of a day as it was earlier. Still easy to deal with as Pratt gets a swinging strike. Count now two and two. Two, two, one away. Pratt deals and gets the swinging strike out. Not out of the woods yet, still need to retire one more batter, but there is two away. And runners are in scoring position for Samantha Mills. Mills a 280 hitter, fourth on the team in that fashion. 10 RBIs on the season. A left-handed catcher. Takes the first pitch for a ball. Mills lost a three game hitting streak in game one. Out in front of the 1 0. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Taken for a called ball. 10 RBIs on the year, but five have come in the last calendar month. Mills. Awaits the 2-1. Standing tall in the left-handed batter's box. Chops down at the 2-1. Comes up empty. Pratt doing a nice job working inside, working outside. See what she comes with on the 2-2. Two -two. She spins the softball on her right hip, looking for the sign from Riley Coyne. She's got it. Foul tip will do it again. A 
elicited a swing, but not a swing and miss. Let's see if Pratt can sit down two batters in a row to avoid the runs. Chopped back. We're still here. Game three scheduled for noon tomorrow. Be sure to tune in. Luke West Poli will be on the call for that one. Appreciate everyone who's helped out the Love and Honor Live broadcast this spring. 2-2. Two -two. Ball three. Rides high. Mills has only walked six times this season. Still using the full length of the bat, no choking up. Hit out to Adriana Barlow, she fields it cleanly. Side arms it over to Holly Blasket first for the final out. So the Chippewas strand two runners. We head to the bottom half of the second, it's four nothing. Bottom of the second inning, and Miami has one, two, three, two up. Allie Cummins, Holly Blaska, Carly Spade. Sen seeing the end of the rope for Caitlin Bean. We'll now see Madeline Wallace in relief for the Chippewas. Quick run on her stats. Wallace a 3.49 ERA. This will be her 15th appearance. She's thrown in 38 and two thirds innings. Has allowed 15 earned runs, 17 strikeouts, 14 walks. After Allie Cummins hits, we'll show you how the Chippewas align themselves defensively. So Cummins walked her first time, came around and scored on the home run from Carly Spate. Called strike. Gonna ask a lot from Madeline Wallace. She normally comes in relief for conference games, but Today, she's going to be asked to come in relief and see a lot of innings. They already have another pitcher up and working in the bullpen just in case. But Cummins fouls one over the grandstand here. In her last four outings, she has combined for five and two-thirds innings pitched, has given up four earned runs been flawless in her last two outings against Toledo and Buffalo. Misses downstairs. Cummins awaits the 2-2 for Madeline Wallace. She rocks, deals. Misses downstairs. The count is full once again to Allie Cummins. This is what she does so well. Why is she such a tough out is 
She continuously works the counts. So here we go with the payoff pitch. The 3-2. Misses downstairs for the second time in consecutive innings. Allie Cummins leads off with a walk. So Holly Blaska steps up to the plate. She struck out looking her first time. Blaska had one hit in the game earlier. There really wasn't a whole lot of offense to tell you about for Miami. And they came up when it mattered most. Blaska hit a missile down the third base line. The 0-1 to Blaska. Foul down towards the first base dugout. It's 0-2. Cummins at first, infield, playing straight up, but Bracamonte is a few steps in down the third base line as Wallace rides one up and in. The hands and popped up in the infield. Coberly for the first step. Let's go ahead quickly take you, just show you the Chippewas defensive alignment. Mills is in the battery and then in the infield, Bracamonte, Springer, Coberly, Cronin, Alexander, Tumley, and Valamont on the outfield. Spade who Hit a moonshot her first time. Steps up for the first time against Madeline Wallace. Takes the first pitch for a called strike. It's 0-1. Sitting all the way on that 0-1. Madeline Wallace clearly working away from Carly Spade. Spade with the wide open stance. Sits at the back of the right-handed batter's box. She awaits the 1-1. And there it is, trying to work that outside. She can't find the zone, and she's falling behind. Called strike. Spade didn't like that one at all. And she paces halfway down the third base line. Count is evened up at twos. Two two misses away. Not giving Carly Spade much to hit. And can you blame him? So 3-2, one runner on, one away. Wallace gets the sign from the first base dugout. Checks her left forearm for the pitch. And the payoff misses. So now we'll see Coin. Coyne struck out swinging her first time. You always got to love when you're coming up to the plate for the second time in a ball game, and it's only the second inning.
graduate student from Chelsea, Alabama. Offers at the first pitch she sees and misses. She tried to climb the ladder. And Wallace evens up at 1-1. But Wallace already at 16 pitches coming into this at bat. Making her throw a ton. At full counts against both Carly Spade and Allie Cummins. There's pitch number three to Riley Coyne. Popped up, but this will be out of play. Bracamonte Mills both gave chase, but they ran out of room, ran out of real estate. It counts one and two. So we'll be back tomorrow at noon. The next week for the final home series for the baseball team. And we'll catch you around some other time. The one two is chopped down the third baseline foul. Just about a foot foul. Bracamonte's working the third baseline. Laced, but foul. And Madeline Wallace isn't getting a whole lot of swings and misses here. Is eliciting a lot of swings. She would love a ground ball double play. Miami takes the series. The worst that they could be at the end of this three game series if they take this ball game is even with Central Michigan. Coin out to left field, but that'll run out of room. As Alexander will get it in. And that's the second out. Coin got underneath it, sent it for a ride, and in a ball game where we've already seen three home runs, the fans got a little excited, but didn't have enough steam behind it. And we'll see Jenna Golombeski, who left the yard the first time. Golombeski's first pitch in there for a called strike. Fourteen home runs on the season. Twenty-five, or rather twenty-six RBIs. Out to left center field. This is extra bases. Up against the wall. One run will score an alley Cummins. Carly Spade rounding third and headed for home. Golombeski with her second base hit of the ball game. It's a two-run double. It's the pesky Golombeski who makes it a 6-0 ball game, and now Chloe Park steps to the plate. So both Allie Cummins and Carly Spade have scored twice already in this ball game. Parks at her first home run of the season. And his first pitch swinging. Oberly fields it cleanly, underhands it to Cronin. And that's the end of the second inning. But the Red Hawks get two runs thanks to the RBI double from Jenna Golombeski. 6 nothing. we head to the third.
top of the third inning here on Love and Honor Live. You're watching Chatterbox Sports. I'm Reed Mouse. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Like the stream. Thank you for watching. Invite you to look around the channel. 6 nothing. our score. If you're a fan of content, sports content, local to Cincinnati, look around. The flagship program, 10 to noon, Monday through Friday, Tom Burnham, off the bench with Tom Burnham. Our producer today, Casey McAllister, is the ace producer for Tom's show. Thank him for being here on this Saturday afternoon. So do up for Central Michigan here in the top half of the third inning. Will be Maddie Springer, then back to the top of the order. Knows the count. Chopped out to Bree Pratt. She fields her position in the circle and gets the first out. If you've watched these broadcasts, you know a big proponent for Miami is getting the first out of an inning. And that's what they did right there. Ray Pratt did a fantastic job of doing that in the game earlier. Sands the first inning. And speaking of the top half of the order, it is Abby Tolme. A little bit of wind here in game two. Up to 13 miles an hour. Blown all over the yard. Feels like a spring day. Called strike on the outside. Brings it to one and one. Thinks about it, probably should have, as it's a called strike. So Bree Pratt ahead in the counts. And the one two gets a swing and strike. Second strike out of the ball game for Pratt's. 41, right fielder, McKaylee Valamont. And it's McKaylee Valamont. Valamont, 0 for 1. We'll check her swing. We'll check down the first baseline. Guy Morrow says no. Valamont did not come around. Two away here, and Valamont takes a called strike. Pratt spins that softball before every pitch right on her right hip. Then turns towards Carly Spade, rocks backwards, and then delivers. Misses, the count is two and one. Out to Chloe Parks at second base. She falls to a knee, fields it cleanly. Over to Blasco for the third out. One, two, three, top half of the third inning. Six, nothing, our score. We head to the bottom half of the third on the Love and Honor line.
Welcome back. Bottom of the third, Kate Kobayashi, Adriana Barlow, Maddie Banks, do up. Thank you for tuning in. Miami played it four runs in the first inning thanks to three home runs. And played it two more thanks to a two RBI double from Jenna Golombeski. Madeline Wallace back in the circle for Central Michigan, and we're ready to roll. Bree Pratt has now gone eight consecutive innings. Pop fly in the infield. Underneath it will be Tolmy. She'll have it for the first out. So a quick first out here in the bottom half of the third. And now it's Adriana Barlow. Right on shortstop, number six, Adriana Barlow. Barlow steps in. She walked her last time. Worked a nice count. First time facing off against Madeline Wallace. And she takes the first pitch for a called strike. Barlow at the back of the right-handed batter's box. Doesn't walk a whole lot. Does have some pop in her bats, but he's an everyday player because of her glove. We've seen her and Carly Spade make some fantastic plays this season on the left side of the infield. Spade made 10 outs in the first game. Hasn't quite continued that pace. But Bree Pratt has been fantastic, throwing eight consecutive, rather, nine consecutive shutout innings. Sun peeking through the clouds now. Two, two. This is low and in. <laughs> Count is full to Adriana Barlow. One away. Wallace gets the sign. Two walks for Barlow, two trips to the plate, and Maddie Banks steps up once again. Banks, a transfer student to Miami. It's been a couple of years at Virginia Tech and spent two years at Ole Miss. Now up here, she went from Oxford to Oxford. And she awaits the first pitch from Madeline Wallace. Shows bunt. Banks in her two seasons at Ole Miss was primarily used as a pinch runner. Now here at Miami, starting in her 42nd game this year. Lays the bunt down. It's going to be a tough play. No one's covering first. On the steal from Adriana Barlow, the second baseman, Coberly, went to cover second. Then the lay down bunt left first base wide open. And we'll put runners on first and second for Allie Cummins. Beautifully executed play. <laughs> so 
So Cummins steps in. 0 for 0. He's walked twice, scored twice. She is second on the team in runs scored this season, trailing only Carly Spade. Her on base percentage up over 500 as she takes the first pitch for a called strike. Wouldn't this be a spot for an Allie Cummins home run? She's hit three in the past week. Taken for a ball, it's now one and one. And there's that sun. Oh, I don't know if it'll be around for long. Called strike on the outside. Cummins didn't like the call. It's one, two, all the same. Holly Blasco awaits in the on-deck circle. There's one away, two on. Adriana Barlow out at second, Maddie Banks at first. Chopped into right field. Actually a nice play by Coberly to prevent it from getting out there. And she makes the play at first. Number five, first baseman Holly Blaska. So move the runners up to second and third. And what a play. Looked as though that had enough speed to get through the infield. And with Coberly shifted over towards the second base bag, towards center field. She had to patrol a long way. But Blaska comes up, hits one out to Coberly, another chance, and another out. Worked to her right, flipped it over to Cronin, back-to-back -back plays for the second baseman, leave the runner stranded. It's 6-0 as we head to the top half of the fourth. Top of the fourth, Bree Pratt in the circle. Two up for Central Michigan. Three, four, five. Kelsey Alexander, Lisa Olo, Skylar Coberly. Coberly made some really nice plays out at second base. Thank you for spending your Saturday afternoon with us. So Alexander will lead off for the Chippewas. The Chippewas with just one hit. Through the first three innings. It was Alyssa Holo. And she's on deck. the front foot, front ankle of Alexander. Alexander's made some nice plays out in left field. If you remember back 
in the bottom half of the sixth inning of game one. She tracked the ball down and prevented two runs from scoring on that swing from Chloe Parks. Eventually, the two runs would come in on a double from Kate Kobayashi. But at the moment, it was the biggest defensive play of the game. Pratt threw three innings at 39 pitches as she falls behind. Called strike. We're here at full. Let's see if we can get updates from the OU softball game as that has implications, as does the game you're watching right here and now. And that's a leadoff walk for the Chippewas. Second time in the ball game that Central Michigan has had their leadoff runner aboard. Not at Western Michigan, Ohio has a 1-0 lead. They won the first game. That is currently in the second inning. If Miami wins and Ohio loses, they'll stand alone at the top of the standings. So at a constant watch between the three teams that are in a tie. And you're watching two right now. Polo singled her last time. And she singled here. Line shot in the center field. Puts runners on first and second, nobody away. Now the last time that this happened, back in the second inning, Central Michigan tried to lay down a bunt. And they did, but they ended up not bringing in a run. Pratt got a huge strikeout over Lucy Cronin. And kept the score at 4 nothing. Miami then went on to tack on two runs. And down six, you can't imagine that Central Michigan is going to try and lay down a bunt here. I wonder what kind of rope Brianna Pratt is going to have in this game and if she's going to come out for tomorrow's game. As Taylor Turner and Laura Landepew have been, at times, lights out in the circle for Miami, but they definitely feel more confident with Pratt. And they, of course they should. She was the tournament MVP a season ago. First team all conference. Her name sprinkled throughout the record book. But you can't expect her to throw all 21 innings in a series. Right out to Bree Pratt. The play at third and then across the diamond, not in time. It's almost a one to five to three double play. Instead, it's just a one to five put out as Miami gets the lead runner. Coberly's now at first on the fielder's choice. Polo moves up to second. There's one away. Emily Bracamonte steps up. She sacrificed herself her first time around and she's first pitch swinging. It'll be tough to get a double play. They get the out at second, just in time. The throw from Barlow to Parks, just beating out the speedy Coberly. And there's runners on the corner.
Two away, and Lucy Cronin steps in. You see the numbers honored here on senior day. Six, nine, 15. Adriana Barlow, six. Bree Pratt, nine. And then the battery is Riley Coyne at number 15. Received a special gift. They actually honored some of Central Michigan's seniors before the game. One and O oh is the count. Missing on the inside. So Cronin, chance to put the Chippewas on the board in a hitter's count. Swings, gets a piece of the 2-0. As Coyne takes one off the foul tip. And I wonder what they're gonna talk about here. Oh, they're just giving a breather to the home plate umpire. Brian Haraberta. Looks like he might have taken one off the toe. And we'll get going here. So two ones the count. Wind blowing out the center field quietly. And a chance for Central Michigan. to tack on a couple of runs and start chipping away. Over to Carly Spain, the throw across the diamond in time. So Central Michigan for the second time in the ball game threatens, but once again, Bree Pratt hangs another zero. That's 10 consecutive scoreless innings in the circle for Bree Pratt. We head to the bottom half of the fourth. Miami looking for more. It's six nothing. Bottom of the fourth inning, Miami up six, nothing. You're watching Love and Honor Live here on Chatterbox Sports, and Miami has the All-American coming up to the plate. Carly Spade. Spade, a home run in a walk, she scored twice. A junior from Chicago, Illinois. has already cemented her claim to be one of, if not the best Miami softball player to ever come through the program. And she's just a junior. A couple weeks ago when Miami was playing Oklahoma, we had over 100,000 viewers for that game. All the Oklahoma fans, number one team in the country, saying they'd wish they had Carly Spade on their team. True honor. 
Two ones, the count to the third baseman. One hopper out to Coberly, and she fields it cleanly. Three consecutive outs for the second baseman. Got the second and third in the last inning. And here to begin the bottom half of the fourth. So now Riley Coyne stands tall in the box. She's 0 for 2. Sit one for a ride her last trip, but ran out of juice. Just short of the wall. Sent Alexander all the way back to the warning track. She got the count here, 1 0. Line shot to right center field. That's down. Coin rounding first. She'll head into second and stop there with a one out double. First hit of the ball game for the catcher. And now we'll see Jenna Golombeski. Two trips to the plate, six total bases, and she's looking for more. Line, one hopper right at Bracamonte, and they double up Riley Coyne out at second. Bracamonte made a nice snag over there at the hot corner. Threw it over to Cronin for the first out. Coyne too far out, out at second, and they double her up. So a quick bottom half of the fourth. We head to the top of the fifth, still 6-0. Top of the fifth inning here in Oxford. I'm Ray Mouse. You're watching Love and Honor Live here on Chatterbox Sports. Miami, four runs in the first inning, two in the second, zeros across the board after that. Bree Pratt, 10 consecutive scoreless innings in the circle for the Red Hawks as they're looking to take game two and take the series against Central Michigan. Came into the series trailing by one game. They were tied with OU. Now, them and the Bobcats of Ohio University are at the top of the MAC standings. Ohio University playing Western Michigan. As we speak, they're up 1-0 in the bottom half of the seconds. So we'll keep close tabs on that. Scoreboard watching time of the season. We thank you for tuning in. If you haven't already, go ahead and click that like button. Do up for the Chippewas here. Samantha Mills, Maddie Springer, then back to the top of the order. The 1 0s fouled back. A little bit of sustained sunlight here. Now been going on for a few innings after an overcast day. Threats of rain in the afternoon, but right now it's a beautiful spring afternoon. 
And Mills offers at the 1-1, comes up empty. Swing and strikeout. First down of the inning here in the fifth. And we'll see Maddie Springer. Shortstop Maddie Springer. Third strikeout in the ball game for Brianna Pratt. She had five in the first. Her season high was 11 strikeouts. That was in the Miami Invitational when she went seven strong, a shutout against Oakland. The game that Miami won, one to nothing. Chopped over to the left side of the infield. Barlow's gonna have to get rid of it quickly. She does, soft toss, but the stretch from Holly Blaska beats out the speedy Springer. And there's two away. Abby Tolmy steps in, 0 for 2. Tomey, pop out in the infield and a strikeout to game two. <laughs> Ball was fouled over here to over the third base dugout. Couple fans who brought their glove to the game. Tried to make a diving grab on the foul ball. Came up empty. Fun moment here at Miami Softball Stadium. If you look out in center field here at the stadium, you'll see the MAC championships and straightaway center. But we'll hear about more of those in a bit as Adriana Barlow gloves the third outs. Bottom of the fifth, 6 nothing. Miami hasn't scored since the second. Look to get the sticks out here on Love and Honor Live. Bottom of the fifth inning, six nothing. Our score. I'm Reed Mouse. You're watching Love and Honor Live here on Chatterbox Sports. Two up for Miami here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Chloe Barks, Kate Kobayashi, Adriana Barlow. If Miami plates two, and it's in five. Eight run rule after five here in college softball. And Chloe Parks gets the inning rolling with a base knock. Line drive out to left field. Parks second hit of the ball game. And now we'll see Kate Kobayashi. Designated player Kate Kobayashi. 
Kate Kobayashi batting 315 on the air. Her OPS over one, 1.008. One home run, two triples, 13 doubles. She's got an on-base percentage at 475. Really great eye this senior from Kansas City, Missouri has. Kobayashi credited with only one RBI in the game earlier. Her double put Miami over top the Chippewas. And she fouls one down the right field line. It's actually off the top of the chain link fence protecting the bullpen. And the count is one and one. Kobayashi has one home run on the season. It was the first ball game of the season against South Carolina. And she takes a called strike. One, two. She has had a hit in five of the last six games played. Kobayashi, the right-handed hitter, awaits the one-two, and this is out to center field. Back-to-back -back base hits. Put runners on first and second. Hit streak continues for Kobayashi, and Adriana Barlow can end this game with a ball in the gap. Wouldn't that be a treat for first senior day? Adriana Barlow. We'll have a talk in the circle for Central Michigan. Arlo had a couple of RBIs in the third game against Akron. On the season has 14, three home runs. So Parks at second, Kobayashi at first, and Barlow lays down the bunt. The sacrifice works. Move runners up to second and third for, for Maddie Banks. Nice play by Mills, the catcher. Tough play for a left-hander. And there's one away. And there will be a talk with the coaching staff and the infield. Maddie Banks could find some outfield grass. Two runs should score, which would be the end of the ball game. Miami with 10 run rolls this season. 10 run roll wins, I should say. Been on the receiving end of a couple of run rolls. In fact, they were run rolled in the third game against Ball State earlier this week. Maddie Banks steps in. First pitch from Wallace. This is flared out to left field, it'll drop. Only one run will score, Banks will take second. It's seven to nothing. So I guess I spoke too soon when I said if Maddie Banks can find some outfield grass, the game will end as the runners had to freeze just in case the Chippewas made the catch. But now we'll see Allie Cummins. The infield will come in, knowing they have to prevent a run from scoring, and they will intentionally walk Allie Cummins. So 
So Holly Blaska is in the on-deck circle. So they'll avoid Cummins entirely. And I don't know if they are trying to pitch around Allie Cummins more so as they're just trying to set up the double play or the force out at home. But it is worth noting that Blaska does have a very similar batting average to Allie Cummins. So at different levels of baseball, they have implemented to where you could just go ahead and point, even in the major leagues, and just say, yeah, we'll just give them first. But still here in college softball, you gotta, you got to throw the four pitches. So the force out is enacted across the field. 7-0 our score. And you're starting to hear the Miami fans get into it a little bit. The dugout was talking up Holly Blaska, saying they, they're intentionally walking to face you. Bases are juiced. First pitch to the senior from Minnesota. Taken for a called ball. Carly Spades on deck, so even if they put Blaska down on strikes or get the force out at home, they'll have to face an All-American with two, two away. And this will miss. The walk will end the game as well. Blaska with 37 RBIs on the season. She's 0 for 3 in the ball game. A strikeout, a pop out, and a ground out. The 2-0 from Madeline Wallace. Chopped foul. <laughs> 2 1 to Blaska. Base knock in the right field, and Miami wins it. Eight nothing in five innings. Miami takes the series against Central Michigan. Brianna Pratt will get the win and the shutout. She has now thrown 11 shutout innings. Miami's bats come out in the bottom of the first inning, leaving the yard three times, and they don't quit. They get two runs in the second. Two runs in the fifth, all capped off by the walk-off single by Holly Blaska. Coming into the series, Miami trailed Central Michigan by a game. They now are over top, and they'll be at the top of the max standings. Just a matter if they'll be alone or situated with Ohio University. Game three will be tomorrow at noon. You can catch that right here on Love and Honor Live on Chatterbox Sports. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. It'll let you know when we go live. If you haven't already, we invite you to like the stream. Go ahead and look around. There's plenty of content if you're a sports fan. But that does it for Mouse out here in Oxford. I'm Reed Mouse for my producer, Casey McAllister. We thank you for tuning in. This has been Love and Honor Live. The Red Hawks win 4-2 and 8 to nothing. See you tomorrow. And the losing pitcher.